Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here, and in this video we are talking about five reasons not to get the Apple credit card. Now we did do five reasons to get the Apple credit card in a video a couple of days ago. So if you haven't seen that after you watch this video, you might want to you know, have a look at that just to see the other side of the coin because it's not all negative with this card. But today we're focusing on five reasons not to get it. So number one, if you're an Android user. So if you're an Android user, it's not just that it's not recommended to get this card. It's actually that you physically can't, okay? <laughs> because you have an Android phone and you have to apply for this card through the wallet app on the iPhone, okay? So you can't apply for it through the website and just use the physical card. You have to actually apply for it through iPhone. And the idea is that the main you know, usage of it will be through Apple Pay, through the virtual card. And the, the physical titanium card is actually just a backup. So if you're happy with your Android phone, um, there's really no point you spending 600 plus dollars or even a thousand dollars on a new iPhone just so that you can get this credit card, okay? Because the whole point of this card has got low, it's got no fees, all right, and no annual fee. But if you spend 600 bucks on an iPhone, then you basically spend a 600 dollar annual fee. I mean, I guess you've got an iPhone as well, but you know, basically for Android users, if you're happy with your phone, you can't really get this card, and you shouldn't even bother looking into getting it. Number two, no sign up bonus. So most credit cards have some sort of sign-up bonus that you would get either in the first three months or in the first year, even cards with no annual fee. I'll give you a few examples. The Bank of America Cash Rewards card gives you a $200 sign-up bonus. The Chase Freedom Unlimited gives a $200 sign-up bonus. The Discover it doubles all the cash back you've earned in the first year. And the Apple credit card gives no sign-up bonus whatsoever. So those three cards I just mentioned before, those were in the same kind of range. Um, as the Apple credit card. They're all no annual fee, but they earn rewards. What I call tier two in my five tier credit card tier system, okay? They all give sign up bonuses, but the Apple credit card does not. Now, the reason they decided not to give a sign up bonus could be that the City Double Cash doesn't give a sign up bonus, and that also earns 2% cash back on everything, just like the Apple credit card does as long as you use it through Apple Pay. So they probably were comparing themselves to the City Double Cash and felt, well, if they don't give a sign up bonus, We've got a lot more to offer. We're Apple. We've got the sexiness of Apple, uh, the desirability. I think we don't need to give a sign-up bonus either. So that could be why. But it's definitely a downer, a uh, negative point about the card. Number three, no benefits. Now, the Apple credit card is just a standard MasterCard. It is not world or world elite. So really, it gives very little benefits from MasterCard and Apple doesn't really add on any extra benefits of their own. So a standard MasterCard, really, they just give you the 0% liability fraud protection and a couple of other things that are really minor. Um, you don't get any of the extra benefits like you would from a world MasterCard, which I'll put on screen now. You can see some of them like cell phone insurance, etc. And this is a little bit strange because normally credit cards will give a little bit of a suite of benefits. I mean, even the Capital One Platinum, which is a card that has no annual fee, it still gives you a load of benefits. You can see here, you've got travel accident insurance, you've got extended warranty, so that lengthens the warranty of things you buy with the card. You've got auto collision damage waiver, basically that's rent car rental insurance. When you pay your car rental with this card, you'll get insurance. There's even roadside assistance. You have to dig for it in the terms and conditions, but it is actually there. It's probably not free, but it might be a better deal than calling some random company or having uh, you know, a AAA membership for the year. So it's kind of disappointing. And you know, the, the real big omission I feel with this card is that they should have offered some kind of Apple Care plan with the card so that when you buy an Apple product at the Apple store or, or anywhere else, right, with this card, you get some sort of extended warranty just on Apple products. That would be really great, okay? Or some sort of Apple Care. You either get a discount on Apple Care or you get free Apple Care. Um, in my opinion, that would have really made this card um, a very good choice for buying Apple products. But instead, you don't get any kind of extended warranty or anything, it seems. I couldn't find it in the terms and conditions. Um, and you actually get a worse deal buying Apple products with this card than if you just bought them on Amazon using the Amazon credit card. Now, another thing is that the card is big on fraud protection, okay? So the whole thing about having no card numbers, they're like, wow, you know, you're protected from fraud, etc. But actually that makes no difference to the card member whatsoever because this is a MasterCard. And if you look at the uh, terms and conditions on MasterCard's website, standard MasterCards all provide 0% liability fraud protection, okay? So you are not responsible for fraudulent charges on this card, whether you have a card number or not. So really this probably benefits Apple more than it benefits you having no card numbers, okay? 
you're still not liable no matter what. It does not matter whatsoever. Number four, great software, but it isn't that useful since it only tracks spending on this particular card. Now, Tech Lead uh, pointed this out on YouTube. He's got a great YouTube channel. He's an ex uh, Google tech lead, I guess was his position, ex Google employee. And he gives quite good insight on a, a number of like technology related or finance related things. Anyway, so on his channel, he has a video about it and he talked about the software, which is very nice. Uh, and you get different colors for different categories of spending, etc. But what is the use of that when this card actually has no bonus categories? So other than just budgeting, okay, if you want to budget how much you spend in different categories, but from the point of view of earning cash back or earning rewards or points or whatever, it's not useful because you basically earn the same flat rate of 2% or 1% if you don't use Apple Pay across everything. And he was saying that it would be much more useful if the Apple Card software would actually work for other credit cards as well. So whatever card you had in your Apple wallet, you would be able to get the same color coded categories on that card too. And those cards also changed color depending on what categories you were using them, uh, using them in, right? So it would be better if it just worked on every card. That's what he was saying. Um, Mint.com gives you a much better idea of your category spending across all cards than the Apple Card software does because obviously the Apple Card software just works for the Apple Card and not your other credit cards. And that's definitely a down point um, for this card. Number five, low cashback rates. So this credit card claims, you know, to be a 2% credit card, all right? But actually, how likely is it that you're always gonna be able to use Apple Pay at every store? I'm guessing you could maybe use it maybe 50% of the time. I think I probably could use it 50% of the time, depending on where I shop, right? But not everywhere where I shop has mobile wallet options, have Apple Pay or, or whatever, okay? Sometimes, you know, you just can't do it. And then you're only gonna be getting 1% back and you might as well use a different card that has a category uh, for that particular, you know, for that particular type of spending. So it's really not that great a card considering you might only be getting 2% um, a fraction of the time. You could just go and apply for the city double cash and get 2% on everything all the time. So the points and miles earning, the cashback earning, it's really not a game changer. There's much better deals out there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Five reasons not to get the Apple credit card, but it's not all bad. I did do another video a couple of days ago. Five reasons you should get the Apple credit card. If you want to check that out, I'll put it on the end card um, of this video and probably somewhere in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new for more credit card tips and tricks every couple of days. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah.